Very quick announcement. January 14th, Austin, Texas, Zilker Park, 2 p.m. Central. We are going to have a Fantasy Flock Network meetup. I hope you're able to make it. I hope I am able to meet you. All you got to do is show up. I would recommend bringing a, some kind of lawn chair. Obviously, completely free and everything, but that should be it. Let's go through. Let's dive into some of these running backs. They're going to be skyrocketing up our dynasty rankings here. This is not only due to their performances over the past two months or so, but also looking forward to the contract situations that we are going to be seeing this offseason. Now, of course... Drop a like on this video. Subscribe to the channel if you play Dynasty Fantasy Football. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comment section. And in that comment section, you can find a link to Underdog Fantasy, where every single week you can check out all these cool player props. And when you sign up with promo code FLOCK, they're going to match your first deposit dollar for dollar up to 100. And you're going to get our 2023 Dynasty Fantasy Football rankings with a minimum of a $10 deposit. Available in damn every state. Find the link pinned to the top comment. But that should be about it. Let's go through. Let's dive into these running backs. And let's start it off with J.K. Dobbins here. And with J.K. Dobbins, I mean, he comes back from injury starting in December. December 11th was the first game that we had him. And yeah, the volume's not through the roof. I mean, he has 15 carries. The issue with Dobbins is he's not catching the ball out of the backfield. But even with those 15 carries, he gets you there. He has 120 rushing yards. He has the rushing touchdown as well. The next week, the volume's not insane. But with this 13 carries, hell, the man's able to go out there 125 rushing yards. The next week, the efficiency's through the roof as well. The week after that, the efficiency's through the roof. Now, there have been a few issues with J.K. Dobbins and why Dobbins hasn't turned into or at least did not turn into a league-winning running back in 2022. The two main issues we have seen are, A, the offense has been horrendous. If you've been watching, <laughs> I mean, the Baltimore Ravens play over the past month, they've probably been the least exciting team in football, at least from an offensive standpoint, where December and January so far, the team has scored 10 points, 16 points, 3 points, 17 points, and 13 points. The Baltimore Ravens are averaging about 10 points scored per game. Now, what has also happened in these two months in December and January? Oh, you didn't have Lamar Jackson. You, you had Tyler Huntley starting for the Baltimore Ravens. So, of course, we should expect the Ravens to be bad. Now, I didn't expect Tyler Huntley to be so bad. They're only scoring 10 points a game. But if we go back and look at the large sample of what we had with Lamar Jackson in this offense all the way up until November 27th, you had 21 and a half points per game in this offense. So this season, you had double the production with Lamar Jackson compared to with Tyler Huntley in Buffalo. So I think that number one thing that we've seen that's been limiting J.K. Dobbins in fantasy with how bad this offense has been, that shouldn't be something we have to be as worried about going forward. Now, there's been another issue with J.K. Dobbins, and the other issue you're going to be looking at is Gus Edwards. Gus Edwards has been splitting this backfield. Now, of course, Gus Edwards has not been nearly as efficient as J.K. Dobbins. He's not looked nearly as good, but he's still seeing snaps. He's still seeing carries, and it's turning J.K. Dobbins into a committee running back, and you can't be a committee running back in a bad offense and be consistent in fantasy. But very similar to the Tyler Huntley issue, we're not going to have to deal with Gus Edwards forever. Now, yes, he is under contract in 2023, but if you pull up the contract details, I'm looking at a running back that is owed $5.6 million. You know how much of that is guaranteed? 1.2. So if the Baltimore Ravens decide, hell yeah, we got to pay Lamar Jackson this offseason, if they decide that they have to commit that money, an easy spot to save some cash will be moving on from Gus Edwards, save slightly more than $4 million, which in my mind would be reasonable when Gus Edwards is going to be 28 and Dobbins has been hyper efficient. So there's an outside chance that maybe Edwards is on the way out this upcoming season. Now, of course, I don't want to sit here and act like we'd be delusional and the Baltimore Ravens wouldn't bring in any more running back depth. They're still probably going to bring in some running back depth. And I never really see J.K. Dobbins turning into a running back with 90 plus percent of the snaps in his back. Field. That's not really going to be a possibility. I think Dobbins can turn this into a 65-35 running back backfield split. 
And if we're going to be honest here with J.K. Dobbins, there's one more issue, and this issue I don't see getting any better. And that's what we said at the very beginning, where Dobbins is not involved as a pass catcher. So if you're playing in a full PPR format, to be honest with you, Dobbins may not be too appealing there. If you're playing in a non-PPR league, hell, sign me up for J.K. Dobbins. But even in a half PPR league, that's going to be at least better than that full PPR league because those passing down running backs aren't going to be able to just lap him with those receptions. So very interesting spot here for Dobbins. I think he's going to have some positive catalysts over the next few months to make him look significantly better. And someone that I know a lot of people are very, very excited about, and I will admit, while it looks like we may end up winning 150000 on underdog this year in our fantasy football drafts, I can't imagine having better results than what we did. One mistake I made is we didn't draft Tony Pollard nearly enough. Tony Pollard was phenomenal this season. If you looked at weeks two through 15 points per game, Tony Pollard was a top three running back in a full PPR league. Weeks eight through 15. So the second half of this season for Tony Pollard, he was a top three running back in fantasy. It doesn't seem real, but trust me, it is. And if we look at Tony Pollard compared to Ezekiel Elliott, the main thing that stands out is the efficiency. We even talked about this coming into this season where, yes, I will be the first person to admit it's not completely fair to do this to Zeke where Ezekiel Elliott goes on the field in obvious rush first situations. Pollard faces lighter boxes, and we would naturally assume that Tony Pollard would be the more efficient running back because he's on the field in better situations. But to see this massive, and I repeat, Massive gap in efficiency for these running backs since Pollard's come into the NFL in 2019, where in 2019, Tony Pollard, 5.3 yards per attempt. Ezekiel Elliott, 4.5. The following season, 4.3 Pollard, 4.0 Zeke. The next year, 5.5 Pollard, 4.2 Zeke. The year after that, this season, 5.3 Pollard, 3.9 Ezekiel Elliott. Now, yes, I'm admitting that this is not a completely fair thing to do because the running backs are out there on the field in different scenarios. But to have this drastic of a difference for Pollard to be out there, I mean, with 20% more yards every time he touches the ball, that is a pretty big deal. And obviously, if you're pulling up the Pollard situation with this contract, Tony Pollard does not have guaranteed money with the Dallas Cowboys next year. Tony Pollard isn't signed with the Dallas Cowboys next year. You have no idea where he's going to end up if we go over and look at Ezekiel Elliott, they could, in theory, get rid of Zeke next season if they really wanted to. They really wanted to. This is the first year where the dead cap is less than the money they would pay him if he stayed on the team. So this is the first year they could save anything from moving on from him. They could only save $5 million, though. And I am sure that they are going to, I mean, sell at least minimum $5 million of Ezekiel Elliott jerseys this upcoming season. Obviously, this is a fan favorite. I'd be surprised if they decided to move on from him to save the $5 million. But the year after that, in 2024, that's where it becomes a real conversation. Because then Ezekiel Elliott will be 29. We can assume, based on how his career is trending, it's not going to be the prettiest sight in the world. And they could save $8.5 million by moving on from Ezekiel Elliott not in 2023, but in 2024. So what I think is realistic with the Dallas Cowboys here is, hell, maybe they don't want to let go of Tony Pollard. Maybe they say, okay, Pollard, let's try to get you under a long-term deal. We'll move on from Zeke in 2024 to pay you on the back half. Or maybe they're looking at Pollard saying, hell, let's just hit him with the franchise tag. It's frustrating, whatever, we'll do it. And then we'll move on from Zeke the following offseason. And then we'll pay Tony Pollard that money. Regardless of the situation, I think Pollard is in his sinning talent, has looked phenomenal, and we were too low on him, so we have to move him up. But Cam Akers coming out of freaking nowhere here to end the season off, to win us some fantasy football championships. I mean, if you look at the past five weeks for Cam Akers, the man's averaging about 15, 16 carries per game, and in a horrible offense. He's out there averaging 70, 80 rushing yards a game. He had three touchdowns in a single performance where the Rams dropped 51 points against the Denver Broncos. Now with Akers, there are a few issues. 
The number one thing being this is a running back that very similar to J.K. Dobbins does not catch the football. And it's very frustrating. I love Cam Akers coming out of Florida State. And a big thing at Florida State is if you looked at his team target share, he was a phenomenal pass catcher. I mean, hell, off the top of my head, I believe it was at like 12.5% for his college team target share. And that puts him in line with pretty much every great passing down running back at the NFL level. But this is a continued trend where Cam Akers is not catching the football. I mean, he had that issue his rookie season. And honestly, even when he wasn't catching it his rookie season, I was saying, okay, ignore it. He's going to be good. He's going to figure it out. He can catch the ball. At this point, we can throw in the towel. We can at least acknowledge the fact that he's gone through this entire season. He's had 10 receptions. I, this is not going to be his role at the NFL level. So it is very sad. Maybe you want to invest into him in that half PPR league, that non PPR league that we are advocating for with JK Dobbins as well. I do think you'll have some positive catalyst for this offense, this upcoming season where I know a lot of people are all out on Matthew Stafford. In reality, I think that Stafford isn't as bad as people are indicating that he is. I think that this offense can get back on track next season especially when you get cut back in. It's just a lost season from the Los Angeles Rams. Not saying that they're a Super Bowl team again, but I think the offense will be dramatically better, and that can help Cam Akers. Now, going over to our next guy, looking at James Cook. He is the only running back under contract for the Buffalo Bills in 2023. Devin Singletary, I mean, in my mind, of course, I can't talk to the Bills coaching staff, so we have no idea what they really think, but I can't imagine they love Singletary. I wouldn't be surprised at all if he's on the way out because we have to look at the actions taken by this Bills front office, by this Bills coaching staff over the past 12 months to have a great idea of what this team thinks. If you remember, they tried signing J.D. McKissick. We thought J.D. McKissick was a Buffalo Bill for quite some time. That fell through, and then they drafted James Cook in the second round of the NFL draft. Then after that, hell, they go and trade for Naheem Hines. Almost everything we've seen has told us that this coaching staff doesn't really care much about Singletary. He may not be in their long-term plans. If you're looking at the usage we've had from James Cook as of late, I mean, on Christmas Eve against the Chicago Bears, you had 11 carries, 99 rushing yards, and the rushing touchdown. You've had just a continued uptick in snaps over the past month which is very encouraging. I think he should be the starting running back for the Buffalo Bills next season. Now, going over to someone that I wasn't a massive fan of, but hell, it's hard to ignore what he's doing. Tyler Algier is a running back that I can't sit here and say, okay, he's guaranteed to be the guy in Atlanta, but he's been pretty damn good. I mean, he won people fantasy football championships here where the man over the final three weeks averaged about 90 rushing yards per game. Now, of course, he is very inconsistent as a pass catcher. He had five targets back in week 16. Outside of that, not really much. But we have to remember, Cordell Patterson's been here in Atlanta. And with Cordell Patterson, I mean, Cordell Patterson hasn't gone to be a complete zero. Of course, his role has shrunk as they bench Marcus Mariota as they clearly look to the future. And a big thing is, Cordell Patterson's not a part of this team's future. If you're looking at Cordell Patterson, the man was 31 years old this season. I I mean, Cordell Patterson to make it through this year was great. Now, there is another issue with Atlanta, and that is the fact that this offense is horrible, very, very bad. But to be fair, it can't be worse than what it was, right? And, And I know maybe we are not really having some great analysis here. I get it. Maybe we should have spent more time thinking about this. We should spend more time making this argument. But if we just pull up the passing stat leaders by team here, you're going to be looking at the fact that the Atlanta Falcons in passing guards were the second worst, I repeat, second worst team in the NFL this season, only in front of the Chicago Bears. And it was like Chicago, bottom of the barrel, bottom of the dumpster, not even in the dumpster, below the dumpster, you know, that nasty like dumpster juice that seeks out. That's where Chicago was. I mean, Atlanta was right above that. Uh, Chicago so far, 2,400 passing yards. Atlanta, 2,700. 
I mean, outside of that, if you just go up, it's dramatically up from even the bad teams like Tennessee, Carolina, and Baltimore. But nonetheless, I'm just saying this because while the Atlanta Falcons were horrendous, well, I don't see exactly how they get that much better. What we do know is it can't get worse. I, I, I mean, I think we can safely say that it can't get worse here. So, Al, if you remove Cordell Patterson, Tyler Algier ended the season on a very hot, much high note, and the offense can't get worse. We have to pay the manager's respect. Keep in mind, a running back that doesn't have a ton of team investment, though. So I don't necessarily want to come out of here and say that he's guaranteed to be the guy next season. This is a team that could look to add a free agent and turn this into a running back by committee. But I think that's all I got for you. Of course, if you enjoyed this video, please go down there, drop a like. Subscribe to the channel if you play Dynasty Fantasy Football. If you want to check out any of these player props, if you want our 2023 Dynasty rankings, go head over to Underdog Fantasy with the minimum of a $10 deposit. They're going to match your first deposit dollar for dollar up to 100 And you're going to get our 2023 Dynasty rankings, plus getting a draft with us in the live stream. But I think that's all I got for you. Again, thank you so much for being a member of the flock. I hope you have a great day, and hope we get to see you with the video tomorrow.